Hola Scorpio singles. Welcome to the Casa. In the rainstorm. In the rain season here in beautiful downtown Cancun, Mexico. This is the end of November. Meet the soulmate read. This is just a very simple read that's uh, painless. You know, always positive. Because we're only asking who is the right one for you. That's just what we're looking at, trying to get an idea what they're like. Using the ethereal visions of illuminated tarot deck, guys. And um, give it the end of a November time frame. It's a predictive read, so I don't really see this as someone that's uh, already in your life, or some, maybe someone you're not really aware of too much as a lover, though. Could be. a friend or something that you never really considered so in a way they'd be kind of new to new energy coming in I see it as being you know when you're completely single totally single as we have the uh, every uh, Thursday also is uh, Libra and Scorpio day the heart spread as well and also by the way I'll put a link to the soul family collective read if you want to check it out uh, it's a daily collective read manifestation spirituality more than uh, romance see if you might feel like um, you resonate with that one uh, but here we're just looking at your person trying to get an idea what they're like um, so very much uh, so you'll be able to recognize them when they when you see them um, and kind of imagine how you could relate to the way I'm describing them and I'll even give the um, astrolog a lot of their astrology you should get their Sun moon Venus and Mars anyway uh, as we go along in this eight card reading first guys we have the seven of swords don't let that scare you this is in their emotional aspect though um, we'll pull two cards for that and here uh, we'll have the eight of pentacles so the seven of swords and the eight of pentacles now this is an in intellectual position the two of swords over the Queen of Wands. So here I'm going to see the moon and the emotional aspects, the childhood. You might pick up stories about the childhood, uh, that kind of thing. Um, hold on here. The urban jungle. <laughs> it's very, it's very nice here. It's such a beautiful, cool neighborhood. I can't believe it's Cancun <laughs> and it's so quiet. So, but this person, you know, going back to their childhood, you know, um, I I think they had a scorpionic parent, probably a mother, and they were a working mother. This could be their story they tell about their childhood. I think they have a Scorpio moon, this person. That's why I get out of Seven Swords there. Um, and so they have this Scorpio moon very strong in them. You just look at that, you know, the old Seven of Swords, you know. Um, remembering everything, you know. Kind of wanting to control things emotionally. Needing emotionally to have control. Uh, Scorpio Moon. Uh, they're so natural, almost every Scorpio Moon. I mean, you sit talk to them for an hour. And you feel like, wow, you've gone so far on this journey with them. But then when you sit back, you don't know, really hardly still know anything about them. And they don't, you, they know all of your dream, actual dreams you had at night for the last couple of weeks. And your hopes and dreams and wishes and your greatest uh, uh, failures and uh, what are your greatest weeks. You know, right after like an hour, you're going to go, what, what, what do I really know about them, you know? I think they got that kind of ability. I think they have a Leo son, this person. I'm going with this Queen of Wands. It's very got the Leo throne, the lion throne, the cat there. Um, but you know, it's like debilitated. Uh, I you know what the heck would that mean? Um, the sun is in debt is a detriment in Libra. Um, it's 
That that's exactly what it is. That's a seventh house sun. That may seem strange. That's what I'm getting on that. They got a seventh house sun. This person, Scorpio moon and a seventh house sun. So they know better, but they do it anyway. But it will tell that will be uh, <clears throat> that will be them. It's like yep, they'll tell you. Yeah, I knew better, <clears throat> but did it anyway. Yeah. So, um, and I think the Eight of Pentacles, too. Yeah, I don't want to say it's a male. It really doesn't have to be a male, male or female. But this person, and they may also have had siblings. It, uh, if they had siblings, they were the caretakers, so they were like the oldest. And, you know, birth order is one of the things that psychologists like, oh, turn out to be for real, I think, right? Um, and so they would be this caretaker personality, someone who want to take the lead, want to control things. Scorpio, I'm not saying all Scorpio moons are all bad and control it. You know, it's just like they they, they can see the things festering. So you're in a family, and it really is hard for them to deal with, you know, because they kind of know, like, the volcano's coming, and you're before anybody else, probably, and sometimes they are stuck, can't... Uh, so they have a tendency how well they try to distract it or uh, manipulate or change the situation, right? Um, now, normally with the Leo moon, it just want to create, it focus on its own stuff. It's pretty uh, positive with Leo sun, pretty positive. But it's kind of debilitated here with the seventh house sun. So it's always like this person always needs someone else to sort of like tell them who they are. Because they sort of don't know. Leo rules the heart too. Traditionally, two of swords is really the answer is open your heart. You know, you're saying, I don't know, I don't know. This person may say a lot, I don't know, I don't know about things. You know, like, or you're just talking to them, they're like, in, uh, uh, no lo sé. No lo sé. No lo sé. No, I don't know. I don't know, for me, <laughs> an adult children alcoholic, when I learned that I could just say, I don't know, and it was okay, I was like, God, I didn't know that I can. I was like a weight lifted off of my shoulder. It was like when someone would ask any question. I don't know why, but I felt like, oh my God, now I, especially with Google, you know, <laughs> it's like I don't know the answer to that. And I realized, no, no, I really don't. <clears throat> so a really complex uh, personality here. And I imagine they're going to come across as a fire sign, a very Leo. Imagine you're going to be, uh, if it's a man, very handsome, a woman, very beautiful. Uh, if it's a man, like maybe even like exceptionally like masculine features. And if a woman, you know, maybe femme, you know, extra femme. And um, physically just attractive in pretty much every sense that you can imagine. It almost doesn't matter the age here. In this regard, this could be someone that's mature. I really don't see the maturity here in this reading. It's almost, to me, I'm kind of like almost reading like their natal chart, picking up on a few things. So if they tell any ch uh, childhood stories, it would be about them basically kind of taking care of things. They may have, you know, to some degree raised themselves, to care to even for others cared for the parent, helped around the house, not necessarily cared for the parent, you know. Um, now let's look at their sexual and love nature. Five of Cups is over the tower. Wow. This is in their sexual and love nature. Let me pull the, um, it's really challenging, um, Page of Cups. This is in the Core Values and Lifestyle. And the devil. Wow. So we're going to focus on, this is going to be um, for a Leo personality. Mm. I think it's going to be a Gemini Venus. Yeah. And I think this tower represents here 
actually a cancer Mars or cancer is debilitated there. So Leo's sun, we have the cancer Mars. Gemini Venus, Scorpio Moon, yeah, so uh, they're charming but in a, in a kind of subdued, disarming way, a uh, very um, easygoing way, likable way, that kind of thing, not wanting to ruffle the fle uh, feathers a man or a woman. Um, it's not so much of that strong Leo energy where they light up a room type of uh, uh, effect they might have. But they'll probably have a lightness about them and their eyes will be bright. It'll definitely be like this fire energy to them, you know. Um, very pleasant to be around. But with a Scorpio moon, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, and with this Cancer Mars and Scorpio moon... If they don't have a, <clears throat> it, it, they're not at least very much capable of giving you the, what was it George Bush called it about Putin, it's like a, a, the a soul stare, huh? I give him the soul stare. Well, he really give you the soul stare. It would be bullshit. <laughs> he or she is your person, you know. Uh, it might be able to really just give people that look that sort of like makes people nervous. That's a Scorpio thing. Um, with them and with them I don't think it'd be any kind of like intentional here energy and the Gemini Venus you know you see the guy crying here and I see it's got the cup so you would think Gemini um, um, but this person I think they have a hard time kind of getting what they want that might have been their theme. Um, like, what they got, they kind of had to provide. And they might have been busy, like, literally. You know, this kind of reminds me of my ex-wife for 25 years. This is her story. Like, she raised three boys because she happened to be a girl. One of them was older than her a year. Um, essentially, like, their mother. And um, then she was just kind of done after that. And so there's this energy of... Uh, they can't get enough for themselves. Um, and ultimately then with their Cancer Mars, you know, the, the way they're most driven to take action is for others. This speaks to me, I tell you, I think they work uh, in um, as a counselor or in social services, or probably as a counselor with a bachelor's in, or a master's in social work or something. And, you know, this speaks to me, and you see the Page of Cups looking at the Five of Cups here to that Venus energy. And now you see the Devil next to the Tower. I mean, <laughs> Devil next to the Tower. I think they're going to tell you about having had a period of issues with addiction. And this would be the drugs and alcohol. Um, it could bring in love, uh, love and sex addiction too. Um, with this uh, page of cups looking at the five of cups here and you know a cancer moon I'm not saying all cancer moons are sex uh, cancer Mars I mean I'm not saying all cancer Mars are, are sex addicts at all although I love the cancer Mars <laughs> it puts a lot of emotion into sex you know I, it, and is uh, what it is um, so that could come into it but it might actually be with the drugs and alcohol uh, some kind of episode that they went through and dealt with um, that would be part of like their story and I think from that they now do something it most like they're that guy that woman that does that they went through healing they went through programs they got it together and they decided what their calling was you know Scorpio Moon this would uh, really mean work well for them is to, you know, now that I've slayed my demons and made it, integrated my demons, let me now do this for other people. Because this person now, the thing is, um, Libra, they're not afraid of the darkness, you know. Um, and it's a good thing. They're just not afraid of it. You know, not afraid of your darkness. So whatever you got to tell them, you might think it's a little dark. 
Ain't, no, ain't gonna be nothing to them. Um, they, they know the darkness of people. And uh, besides, this is your soulmate, so it won't even be an issue. But if there's any concerns like that, you know, this would be the kind of person to be like extraordinarily accepting and understanding, you know, of <clears throat> pretty much anyone, I imagine. So give me a like, guys. Uh, thumbs up. Tell friend, tell friend. Please subscribe. Thank you.